Hi, it's time to look at wireless charging. In this case, a, from a company called Ycharge, and I've gotten many requests from this because uh, Linus from Linus Tech Tips did a video on this. Here it is, I'll link it in down below. Completely wireless power, holy shit. That this speaker and he's right showing here, off this very cool demo supplied by uh, Y Charge of these two trains going in um, opposite directions around this track, being powered from this infrared transmitter up on the roof. Now this has actually been around for a while, and if you have a look at their demo video, let's have a look at it. It's got wanky music in the background, and it's just got all these like just um, Photoshop graphics. It doesn't show anything at all, and it looks like it's complete and utter bullshit. There's this transmitter on the roof that transmits uh, infrared, near infrared uh, beam to the phone and tracks it around and automatically charges. It looks like complete and utter bullshit, but it's actually not. It actually, um, it does actually work just like all of these wireless power uh, technologies we're getting, things like U-Beam, U-Beam works. Energis, Energis works. Um, same thing that uh, Y-Charge, yes it is pronounced Y-Charge, I have been reliably uh, informed by the company, and it, it also works, but is it as good and groundbreaking and will it revolutionize the wireless charging industry? That's what we need to take a closer look at. So this train demo here, which uh, Linus was showing off, and also him uh, charging his mobile phone as well, and also that uh, Bluetooth speaker down there, they are actually being powered from that unit on the roof via infrared laser. And it, it looks pretty cool. And oh, granted, it's a very cool demo. They're, it's actually tracking these trains as they go around the track and actually wirelessly beaming the infrared power to them. Very cool. But yeah, as always with these things, the devil's in the detail. Now, how do they do this and what products do they have? Well, I'll link in the website down below and all the reference uh, stuff I talk about in this video down below. You can have a look for yourself. But basically, they've got this infrared transmitter, which they can put on the roof here, and the black circle in the middle, that actually has the uh, near-infrared laser a diode in it. So this is, does actually use a laser, and it's got the tracking system uh, as well, which is able to steer the laser beam around and, and precisely precisely target um, the device which you're trying to uh, power. So in the case of the uh, trains, it would actually be uh, tracking and then multiplexing because it's only got the one laser in it, I believe. So it actually um, has to track both of them and uh, switch and alternate, multiplex effectively, the power between them. And it claims to be able to um, handle up to four uh, devices and it claims to have a five watt total delivered power and with a like a 50 uh, square meter field of view and they're claiming five meters now i have actually been talking to the um head marketing person at y charge and they do say it is more capable than that but they just limit um the uh, distance just for um technical issues and they do have these uh, reference integration products that there are uh, that you can get if you're like partner up with them and stuff like that. Uh, the one in Linus's video doesn't actually look like this. It looks very uh, quite different with a larger um, area on the screen like that. So this, these are just Photoshop things. Anyway, the ones they're showing in Linus's video are just uh, prototypes. So they've got this uh, roof mount transmitter. They've got this external receiver. As I said, looks nothing like that. Um, now the kick transmitter. Um, this is a one watt job hand, handles up to 10 receivers and this is the one that they had um, FDA uh, approved apparently FDA safety approved apparently and they've just got a uh, Qi charging ones which we saw in Linus's video as well it's just like a traditional Qi charging mat but it's got the window and that's the window that looks like is on the prototype for their uh, mobile phone receiver one as well so they do have a couple of products that one's capable of uh, one watt total delivered power so prototypes for these things do actually exist and they do work. As you saw in Linus's video, I've been assured by the company that there are no batteries in the train. Um, it is actually receiving the power from the transmitter on the roof and I totally believe them. Uh, you can see sort of like a uh, sort of a 3D model here of there's obviously the scanning laser mechanism there and if you go over, which I'll link in down below because you're going to need hours to read it and digest it, if you go over to the uh, patents over here, you can have a look at uh, all sorts 
sorts of stuff. I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on about all the things to do with safety, which we'll uh, talk about. And it looks like it um, it comes from uh, Ortel Alpert is the original, one of the original inventors way back in 2008. There's another one in 2005 or something. And uh, yeah, here it is. And apparently he has um, assigned... Uh, some of his old patents over to Y Charge. So that looks like what happens, but they've also got the new modern one, uh, which was granted in uh, 2015, which covers the overall system. And it goes into a lot of detail about the safety and the operating mechanisms and the uh, inbuilt energy storage and stuff like that, tracking and all that sort of jazz. Now, as I said, I have been talking uh, publicly on Twitter and also privately via email with uh, Yuval Boga, who is the uh, head marketing person for YCharge. And basically, I tried to uh, ask them, hey, first up question, what's the efficiency of this thing? In this case, the end-to-end system efficiency. How much power do you put in the transmitter on, on the roof? How much energy do you get? Uh, how much power do you get going into your actual product um, from the cell? So that takes into account the efficiency of the laser, the uh, efficiency of the medium. And the good thing about one of the huge advantages here is that in an indoor environment like this is different outside and space-borne lasers and other atmospheric things. But in an indoor environment, there's pretty much no loss in the air for this thing. So there's no medium uh, loss. So if you're transmitting say one watt out of your laser, then in theory, you should be able to receive one watt. There's no loss in the air. Now, they were cagey about uh, releasing an efficiency figure for this, and that's always a, a red flag when companies have been working at this for a long time. I think six years at least, uh, why charge have been going, and they can't tell you an efficiency figure, trade secret, they say, all that sort of sort of stuff or will tell you if you're a like signed up and you probably signed an NDA and you're you know one of the in integration companies you're working with them then you can find out but as it uh, turns out um, we can just do our own calculations now um, because they ne need a uh, near infrared uh, laser and I've seen other figures and they seem to be in the ballpark of 60% uh, efficiency for the lead power transmitter so that's what I've uh, taken here it you know we're just sort of doing back of the envelope uh, calculations here. And now, um, of course, the other end of the system, you need the solar receiver, um, the solar cell. Now, in this case, it needs to be uh, specifically designed to accept the bandwidth of the near-infrared. And uh, this one here, this solar cell can capture all wavelengths of the solar spectrum, and you can go into details. I'll link all these uh, down below. But uh, pushing the efficiency as high as a stunning 45%. Uh, basically, and this is um, very recently, uh, July 2017. I don't know if these are on the market yet. Now, um, you can actually potentially get better than this if you tailor a uh, solar cell that's specifically designed for you know, less than the band gap reference of the wavelength, the monochromatic wavelength that you're dealing with this, with the laser. That's advantageous. You might be able to get higher efficiency than this 45%, but as I'll show uh, shortly, they have not uh, disputed my figures here. So let's take a look at them. This is real basic stuff, not hard at all to figure out their absolute maximum what they're going to get out of this thing. And I showed them these uh, numbers and they really didn't uh, dispute them. So let's go through it uh, quickly. Let's assume that we've got a one watt uh, laser diode here um, and it's 60% efficiency ideal. Um, that's, you know, potential like that's like ones on the market that you can buy so let's say you get 0.6 watts out of that thing um, now let's I originally started out by assuming that they had a large um, spot size their, their laser they were actually you know uh, uh, sort of um, beaming that out to a larger spot so that you can get like less error in your tracking and things like that you don't have to be nearly as uh, precise in that tracking so I'll just run through the numbers but this is not how they actually do it okay um, so if it was as large if the you know the 
solar panels that big and your spots around there like that then you actually lose a lot of it in this case you lose um, 65% and you only capture 35% of the area so you get 0.21 watts out of the thing and uh, the solar cell efficiency uh, as you saw 45% could be less maybe could be a bit more but they didn't dispute these figures so I believe it's this or lower um, so you get 95 uh, milliwatts out of it or 9%, 9.5%, let's call it 10% efficiency, best case, not assuming any losses. And this is also assuming that there's no medium loss in the air in the room, which I think is quite uh, fair because we're not outside, we're not going through clouds, fog, whatever it is, um, you know, so they should get basically no loss in in a room so there you go so it could be 10 percent best case but uh they looked at this and they said hey they implied they didn't state specifically but they implied that the spot size is smaller and it could potentially be within the area of the that little window that you uh, see here. So this little window, it'd be like somewhere it's got to hit that target, precisely hit that target. And so all of the uh, laser energy or the 0.6 watts of it hits that area. Okay, so I've drawn, so let's assume that the capture area is 100%. Even then, solar cell efficiency, 45% ideal. We're talking 0.27 watts or 27% ideal efficiency. Now, they claimed publicly that their efficiency was end-to-end, -end, system efficiency was similar to an LED, right? Um, which is higher than that. So right off the bat there, ideal, I think they're not getting anywhere close to that. And I was able to extract from them in the end that it's somewhere between, or it was a pretty good guess on my part, that it was somewhere between 5% and 27% upper limit. So it's definitely not above 27% because you can bet your bottom dollar if they were getting, you know, if they were getting 25% efficiency out of this system, I'd be singing it from the freaking rooftops, right? Hey, look at the whole world. You beam, ha, screw you. You know, <laughs> bugger this 0.01% efficiency. We're getting 25% with zero medium loss and they'd be crowing about it. Um, they wouldn't be keeping silent about something like that. So I think it's way under 27%. I, my guess, my spidey sense tells me it's more in that 10% ballpark. But they said basically implied that's better than 5%, so it's not horrible. And hey, that's actually not too bad for a system like this. Of course, as I've mentioned in the U-Beam uh, video I've done, like, you're not going to change the world with this thing, okay? If your goal is to have every single person using one of these in their home, then that is horrible, okay? We design and we have regulations in place. Many countries have regulations in place for uh, you know, Energy Star compliance, uh, for uh, charges and things like that. If everyone was charging their phone, billions of people around the world at you know 10 percent efficiency or something like that it's not good for the planet but for niche applications hey you know if you're getting you know five to ten or even 15 percent efficiency that's pretty darn you know that's decent that's usable we can work with that but what impact does this have on safety well let's have a look at it this rooftop one which linus was using here total delivered power five watts their own figure okay and they have not denied that it is under 27%. So let's take best case, it's 27% efficiency. I don't think it is, but best case, five watts delivered power, that means you need an 18 and a half watt near infrared laser. Wow, that's a kick-ass laser, but that's best case 10% efficiency. Okay, you need a 50 watt laser. That's now i'll link this pattern in down below and sorry i can't go through it because it is just it is super long i could do a one hour video just going through every paragraph of this thing but suffice it to say that a whole bunch of it i'm talking pages and pages and pages all it goes on about 
is safety, um, such as reflections, elaborate beams, and um, small footprint to, uh, to prevent scattering, because even the scattered uh, laser at these sort of power levels can be extremely dangerous. Class 4 lasers for half a second, and that's basically the category that they're in. And they talk about all the extensive safety systems that they have to put in place and things like that. Another uh, patent talks about a retro reflective uh, surface so it can actually measure and uh, like uh, the power actually received. They, they talk many times about uh, fingerprints on um, these on this, um, you know, the surface up here, because, you know, if you've got a mobile phone thing, it'll have fingerprints and that can scatter the light and all this sort of jazz. And they're talking about all sorts of mediums and different types of uh, things to prevent reflections and scattering. And they're talking about uh, how their safety system depends on the fact that it's um, in or organic uh, matter doesn't reflect the particular wavelength that they've got. Very ridiculously in depth about the safety of this thing. It is like the number one requirement in this system. Now, as I said, they have said that they uh, got this model here, just this model, the kick transmitter. This is the one that is sent away and apparently got FDA approved. Now, they actually uh, won't give me that um, FDA approval document. And as far as I've, I've asked around, as far as I know, it's not publicly available. Now, as it turns out, the FDA do actually approve like laser products and stuff like this. And once again, talk about class four laser light show, industrial lasers, medical devices for laser imaging exposure, like skin exposure and all sorts of stuff, eye hazards and laws and regulations and laser products. And um, interestingly, they also have here uh, manufacturers of laser products can request an alternate means of providing a radiation safety. This is called a variant. So whether or not they've uh, their approval relies on a variance to the standard uh, because they're, you know, some new sort of application which probably the FDA haven't approved before. We, we don't know until we get those documents and um, they apparently won't give it to us. So who knows? But I, I do not trust this. This thing has to have at least an 18 to 20 watt near infrared laser in the thing, which is ridiculous ridiculously dangerous um, and so they have to have all these protections in place now they may have done this absolutely perfectly but I, I can't see how you can possibly make this 100% safe I, I just don't see it so that FDA approval may not even be worth the paper it's written on hey but it makes great marketing material doesn't it I mean get your next seed funding round that's what it's all about. Now, of course, this is the only, this is the one what delivered system. That has no, nothing to do with this one that they used uh, Linus because this is not a product that they're selling yet. So they can have prototype systems and they can demo them and things like that without, presumably without having to meet, um, you know, approvals for products for sale because it's a prototype. And nothing that says that this one is going to be approved for sale. So yeah, who knows? Like you want to put like a class four, like 20 watt plus laser in everyone's house, in every environment, with every sort of surface possible. Like, I don't care how short they're pulsing these beams. They're making the claim 5 watts continuous, continuous, total delivered power. You've got to continuously deliver 5 watts. So I don't care if you're, you know, pulsing it on and off. You might, uh, be in, if you want to do that, if you want to duty cycle the thing uh, lower, which I'm sure they're absolutely doing. It's not just continually on. The patent actually does tell you about this. This, it tells you that uh, the receiver can actually uh, communicate back probably via Bluetooth or some other uh, short range um, RF comms, communicates back to uh, modulate the power level and things like that. And apparently uh, you could potentially even send data over the laser and, um, you know, stuff like that. So, and could even potentially have that retro reflective surface. So the transmitter could have uh, some sort of hunting mechanism. So that train could feed back and say, oh, no, like uh, my power's dropping, move it this way a little bit. And, you know, I'm moving in this direction. It could potentially have, a, you know, really smart algorithms to track that thing. And it's actually very impressive getting a demo like this working so you know hats off to them 
um, they've done a good job. And I'll also link in an interesting uh, paper from uh, Renesis of all people here about the photobiological effects of near-infrared um, exposure to the eye and stuff like that. And there's IEC, um, you know, safety limits and exposure limits for, uh, you know, uh, laser uh, radiation and uh, stuff like that. But like okay it's a cool concept like you know to overcome all the problems with uh wireless power transfer you know the ridiculous ultrasonics one of uh u-beam or the um energist one by the way i will link in this paper from uh, a presentation at wireless power week um from who who did it um christopher m brown hats off if i might end up eventually doing an Energis um, video debunking the Energis thing. It's basically a Wall Street scam. This is a publicly listed company and uh, uh, Christopher is like a um, a venture capital uh, type person and he, he this is the most brilliant takedown of the Energis uh, concept and once again it's um, approved not by the FDA but it's approved by the FCC and he goes into detail about how that means absolutely nothing and it's absolutely bullshit and the share price and they're actually selling um, their secret where is it there you know nobody nobody on the board of Energis is buying they're all selling right and insider trades um, it's just crazy anyway Energis so both of those why both Ubeam and Energist are dead ducks it's just not going to happen um, um, and this one, you know, tries to, granted, it's a good idea, it tries to overcome that, but I don't know, my big concern is uh, safety on this sucker, really, and what is the real world efficiency? Once again, let's see if we can get some data on that. So Linus does uh, this impressive demo with this uh, creative Bluetooth speaker here just to show how much power this thing can actually deliver. And of course, once again, the red flag is no real power measurements done here. Not by the company. They, of course, won't reveal the efficiency figures. They won't show any tests with real power in, power out meters or anything like just even a power out meter, let alone the uh, system efficiency. Um, now, I couldn't find any real uh, power draw figures for the train so let's ignore that but the creative uh, speaker here and it's the uh, creative d100 wireless speaker uses four AA batteries uh, it can play up for up to 25 hours and if you take a you know phenomenal high-end alkaline four watt hour uh, per cell there four cells 25 hours eh, do the calculation it's about roughly 0.66 watts or you know let's you can round it to say half a watt um for example that this thing is actually uh you consuming when it's playing music so uh, this demo here really is not that impressive for a unit which is supposed to be able to deliver five total delivered power of five watts the demo he's actually doing is only using like one tenth of that meh so sure enough, the system might be able to deliver its claim five watts. I don't know. Um, you know, it might very well be. But say, for example, this phone charging demo, which he did, which he had uh, problems like holding the thing and tracking and getting all that sort of uh, jazz. But it eventually worked and it charged. It showed, you know, it went doo -doo 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 and, and charged, started charging the thing. But what that means yeah, like it doesn't matter. Yeah, you can start a phone charging, um, but does it have that an actual energy and that power to deliver to the phone? And of course, you know, a char like phones, you want to charge at a couple of watts or something like that. Half a watt, yeah, it's you know, it's almost trickle charge. But apart from the safety of this thing, yeah, the tracking technology might be cool, but um, uh, like U-Beam and other uh, companies uh, doing this have a similar sort of that problem of tracking the phone when you're moving it around. And uh, like, you know, the problem is getting that accuracy, really? Can they get like uh, the, I think the cell is like, in my estimates, like 15 to 20 millimeters, like maximum height. There's a bit of width there, but can they target that? And if it's like, you know, and if it looks like uh, that, for example, even a small window, can they actually really get that sort of accuracy? Maybe I, if I said they had that hunting algorithm to, you know, zone in on it, but... 
Jeez, come on. And then you're talking about uh, maybe angle effects and things like that. There could be, as I said, surface um, area drop based on um, that you're not doing the whole surface of the solar cell. There could be uh, issues, you know, when you're holding in your hand like this, like your head's in the way, all sorts of things. Will it be able to track? And uh, it's just dicky. You know, it's one of those things that is kind of like, just like, why do we want this? Just put it on a Qi charging pad. They work, they're very efficient, and they cost next to nothing. And they're already built into your phones. Why do we need this dicky thing? And you've got to plug a dicky thing into your uh, phone that can snap off and break and you can lose it. No, 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 I, you know, no. It's a, it, they've got some cool tech here, but I, like, as far as a practical phone charging solution in the real world that people are going to want to use, sorry, just can't see this one flying. So I think I'll leave it there, otherwise the video is just going to be far too long. But when you run the numbers on this thing, it's not as good as you think it might be. So granted, it's going to have some useful applications, this thing, no doubt about it. I think they've got a future. It's probably the best of the wireless, uh, apart from the Qi charger, of course, the best of the wireless, uh, like at a distance, um, charging ones, if you can overcome that safety problem you know so it's really good for powering sensors and um, this wire wireless uh, laser power delivery which they didn't invent by the way it's been around for a long time um, they've just happened to patented this in implementation of it um, it, it really does have a, a decent future um, but it's not as you know it's not going to be as widespread as you think let's take the classic example of the Starbucks coffee house you know they're going to uh, give everyone one of these um, you know one of these chi embedded receivers right and you can just put it on the on the table anywhere you get one with your order and you can put your phone on it they leave them lying around you can put your phone why don't you just have a battery in the thing, which was probably what they do anyway, and just charge them up, the battery, like a large high capacity battery, and then just give that to the customer and you can put them in a rack and charge them overnight and they're ready and they can last the whole day and they can go anywhere and they don't need a, a you know, a 20 watt plus laser scanning all over the bloody place, getting all sorts of, you know, you have to do the laser dance trying to hold it in place like this and I like people walking past and it cuts off and all sorts of thing. I, it's just a ridiculously complicated and expensive solution um, that's not really needed. Sometimes... Just sometimes you don't need to invent a better solution. We've, uh, phones already have the Qi chargers in them. You can already get like battery pack based Qi chargers. Just put one of those on your Starbucks coffee table. You don't need this convoluted laser system. But as I said, anyway, it's got some really good niche applications. And yeah, hats off to them. I believe it is real, um, but they will not give me the FDA approval documents. That would be interesting to see exactly what they've got FDA approved at what power level and things like that under what circumstances because um, I greatly doubt, you know, they're advertising that, oh, it's FDA approved, that's fine, it's done. Done and dusted, no worries. I, I don't think it's even close to that ideal. Um, so, yeah. I believe it's real and it's really cool um, and they did offer, they haven't offered to uh, send me one as such but they have offered like if I'm willing to run a shootout I, we could turn up at a trade show we could invite all their competitors and then we could have a shootout or something like that yeah right <laughs> they'd run a million miles when it went once I bring my uh, power measurement gear with me you know and that's why in these sort of demos they will not show you the power measurement they won't talk about any of the you know the real meaty technical details which have practical implementations and things like that they just say oh it's fda approved it's fine no worries and look it powers a train and some uh, and a speaker a speaker takes a huge amount of power <laughs> peak music power output anyone anyway yeah, it's it's really cool, you know, everyone, look, 50,000 thumbs up, look at this, 50,000 thumbs up, everyone thinks this is the duck's guts, and yep, they've solved uh, wireless power, nah, sorry, they haven't, they've got some cool tech, it no doubt works, but there's a lot of issues with it, anyway, if you want to discuss it down below, please do, EV Blog Forum's the best place to do it, hope you liked it, catch you next time. Hello.